he was a real fraud, and he, he was really good at it. A real fraud, they say. Police call him a wolf in priest's clothing. A phony father accused of ripping off his flock. Now, the papal visit scam that ended his two decades of deception. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 tonight at 11. Plus, it's a lottery for liquor. And you don't need a ticket. The rare bottles of bourbon up for grabs from the state. And why you pay to win but not to play. Plus, fighting to clear his name after allegedly shooting his friend. The three words this accused killer does doesn't want his jury to hear. And this sure sounds like something out of a movie. Bogus test scores, a phony degree. How police say a Pennsylvania lawyer faked her way to the top. Every time that we would see my dad in the parades or at school, I would be really proud because he's my dad and he's like big in the community. The community called him a hero. They called him dad. I never thought that when I gave him a hug and kiss goodbye and told him that I loved him that that would be the last time. Tonight, the exclusive interview. The children of a fallen officer share their final moments, what they remember most, and what they miss already. 32 stories. That is 430 feet from the roof to the ground with nothing to hold on to but a rope. Why would anyone repel this Pittsburgh building? Well, some did it for the thrill, others maybe to overcome a fear, but everyone who went over the edge today did so in honor of someone facing an even greater challenge, the fight against cancer. Well, at first I didn't think it, it actually happened. Like, I wasn't sure that, like, it actually happened. I was just kind of in shock, but it was really, um, sad and depressing. When you're 13, the thought of spending the rest of your life without your father is beyond difficult to imagine. But for these siblings, that loss is now their reality. Over the last week, we've told you about Eric Eslery, the Ligonier police lieutenant killed in the line of duty by a suspected drunk driver. But tonight, his children reached out exclusively to Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Ashley Hardway for an opportunity to share their memories of Eric Eslery, the family man. I didn't know that my life was going to change that night. He thought he was going to spend Father's Day with his infant daughter. Instead, he spent it in the hospital. And every day since has been spent fighting for justice, recovering from the attack that left him paralyzed from the neck down. And now tonight, three years later, he's one step closer to getting that justice. His three accused attackers face criminal charges now. And the victim, Philip McKenzie, is speaking publicly for the very first time in an exclusive interview with Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Bob Hazen. No one never assumed that they would not be coming home. Like, it never crossed our mind at all. Those who lived in this three-story apartment building watched it burn. They watched it crumble. But they tell us they did not expect it to be torn down before they could get back inside. And now nearly 50 people, many of them children, are left with absolutely nothing. Pittsburgh's Action News 4 reporter Bo Berman joins us live in Swissvale tonight with who's stepping in now to help out. Bo? Daycare or drug den tonight. Police in Lancaster say this house is both. Investigators discover 87 grams of marijuana in the same building where a woman babysits children. Now, 43-year-old Craig Johnson is charged in connection to that pot, which officers say is worth about $600. His wife, who runs Jimbery Family Child Care, has not been charged, and police do not believe any children were harmed. I told him, I said, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, you know, I'm worth a lot of money ourselves. Well, that's what police say the suspect was after. Money, allegedly, to buy diapers. And when he couldn't get it by knocking on doors in southwest Greensburg, they say he turned to this, armed robbery. Only Pittsburgh's Action News 4 has this surveillance video you're looking at, showing the holdup inside Dog's six-pack shop. You can see the gunman demanding cash from the register, but what this doesn't show is the clerk dragged out of the store to a nearby parking lot. The suspect did get away, but didn't make it far. He's been identified tonight as Tyrone Corpering, a regular customer at the store. Police say he robbed. Well, when his former lover blocked him from joining a band, police say he set fire to that man's house, pouring a can of gasoline on the stairs and then just watching it burn. And now we've learned Rodney Bryant has just been arrested for intentionally setting the fire that briefly trapped three men on the upper floors of this Garfield home, forcing them to use buckets of water from the bathtub to douse those flames and to escape. Bryant is being held in the Allegheny County Jail tonight on a long list of charges, including seven counts of aggravated arson.
Pittsburgh's Action News 4 was first to learn about a youth football league canceling its season over threatening letters written to coaches and referees. Now a Mount Pleasant man is not just admitting to writing them, he's also defending them. I wrote a threatening letter, yes. I take full responsible for that. And uh, on that letter, I, uh, I back up uh, everything on that letter. Now, one thing Joseph Lofner doesn't take responsibility for, ammunition rounds left at the football field marked with intended victims' names. But he admits to the letters he says he wrote in anger over player weight limits and injuries. Police say Lofner asked his co-worker to write the letters so they wouldn't match his handwriting. But it turns out their stationery gave them up. Yeah, that is, sir. Those letters were written on placemats and those placemats were outdated and were no longer used, but still at a restaurant where both of them were employed. Now, even though Lofner denies responsibility for the bullets, police say he is suspected of leaving personalized shells at someone else's house in an unrelated incident.